Our election day coverage continues with one of the most powerful executives on Wall Street. He actually started his career as a Democrat in the White House more than 30 years ago, then went on to co-found BlackRock and now is chief executive of Evercore Partners. Ralph Schlostein is back on the inside track. Ralph, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I want to actually put up some of the election maps up there. Let, let's get them up on the wall and you can see right here this is what's supposed to happen in the House. It is effectively a sea of red. You've been a Democrat for pretty much your whole career. You've been a big fundraiser for the party. When you look at this kind of thing, does it scare the daylights out of you? Well, I think we have a uh, pretty consistent ebb and flow in politics in this country. Uh, Mid-year elections after presidential elections always wind up going uh, back in the direction of the party out of power. Uh, I think this is going to be probably a little stronger than normal. But part of the reason for that is uh, there's a very fertile hunting ground for the Republicans. There are 49 seats that are held by Democrats in districts that were won by McCain. So those are not historically Democratic districts. So when you have the flow going back in the other direction, uh, you have a, a, a lot of opportunity. While I ask you the next question, let's put up the Senate map. And I should point out that this is all according to 538.com, Nate Silver's blog that the New York Times is now running. And you know what he does? He tabulates, or at least he statistically analyzes all the polls out there to give us, in his mind, the best guess of what's likely to happen. And it's more or less the same thing here. Blue on the fringes, red in the center, and the deepest red uh, signifies the surest gains for the Republican Party, or at least the surest seat. Ralph, we hear the line, Obama hates business a lot, so often, in fact. Is that why the Democrats are on the cusp of these losses in your mind? Well, first of all, I don't think that's true. Uh, I think the president inherited a very, very difficult economic circumstance uh, where we had uh, huge joblessness, the financial industry uh, and the financial markets uh, literally uh, falling apart. So. Uh, I think almost anyone uh, who had inherited that situation would have some degree of unpopularity, both with the populace at large and with business. Uh, I think the, uh, and I certainly don't think his unpopularity with business is causing his unpopularity with the populace, because business is pretty unpopular with the populace as well. That's a very fair point. Is it fair for people to blame the president? We know that the Republican Party, John Boehner and Mitch McConnell, have done everything they can to deflect or at least uh, point to the president as the source of the country's economic problems. He's been up against his own party, your party, the Democratic Party. How much do the Democrats, uh, how much are they to blame for the situation their party is in right now? Well, I think uh, any time you suffer a large loss, you have to look inward and see what have we done right and what have we done wrong. And, you know, clearly uh, we're in a, a world today where the number one through ten focus of the populace at large business is economic growth and jobs. And uh, I think the president has uh, and the Congress has been focused on that, but they haven't had the laser like consistent, exclusive focus on that, that both business and the American uh, population uh, demands. And if I were the president, and I suspect uh, he'll do this, uh, the last two years uh, would be about the economy, stupid. In retrospect, was health care a mistake? I think that, uh, you know, health care has been something that has been on the Democratic agenda, uh, you know, since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, there's a saying, timing is everything. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, the last two years should have been about a laser-like focus on economic growth and jobs. And rightly or wrongly, even though health care is part of the long-term uh, success of this country, uh, I think no one would want the impression or the reality of the president and the Congress taking their eye off that number one goal. Ralph, uh, we may end up with gridlock. It could be a divided House, a divided Congress, rather. The president is going to be somewhat weakened, probably, by the results that we see today. Some people say that gridlock is good for the economy. If the president is going to have, as you describe, a laser-like focus on the economy, what happens if Congress doesn't cooperate with him? 
Well, I think that uh, the conventional is, wisdom is that gridlock is good for the economy and the markets. And I think the thing that's wrong about that conventional wisdom is that uh, historically we've had gridlock when the economy and the markets have been pretty good. Uh, we have some very, very serious short-term and long-term problems uh, in this country. And my, my view would be if we actually have gridlock, you know, there'll be initially this very short-term view that it's okay. Uh, and then I think people will begin to realize that further delays in addressing both our intermediate-term and long-term problems uh, is very bad for America. Uh, Ralph, uh, I want to point out to everybody that this is Linda McMahon, the Senate candidate in Connecticut. She's about to cast her ballot. We just wanted to show everybody that Linda McMahon, who's up against Richard Blumenthal, is actually uh, right there to vote. Um, she's been critical of the administration. So many people have been critical of the administration, whether it's the stimulus, whether it's the bailout of the auto companies, whether it's HAMP, for example, mortgage modifications that didn't work. As you look ahead, what kinds of policies do you think the government, and I mean the administration plus Congress, needs to prioritize in order to get this economy going again, in order to create jobs? Yeah. Well, if, if, if I were sitting there, which I'm not and don't expect to be, but if I were sitting there, uh, I would have a uh, un uniquely focused effort on improving America's competitiveness. Uh, I think the number one issue, short term and long term, for this country is making our industry competitive, making our workers competitive, and that's a combination of encouraging investing, encouraging business to come here. It probably means things like uh, focusing on research and development and cutting corporate tax rates. Maybe it means uh, putting in place a small consumption tax to shift the focus of America from consumption uh, to investing and we have to have a, a plan for attacking the long-term uh, budget imbalances that we have in this country because at some point when the world becomes more stable they will prevent this country from achieving what it's able to achieve. A challenge for everybody who's going to be elected tonight and who continues to serve in office. Ralph, thank you so very much for joining us here on the Inside Track. Ralph Schlostein, the CEO of Evercore Partners. He has a long background in Washington and politics, and he brings the two together, Wall Street plus Washington.